Good morning, everyone. It's uh, it's good to be seen, and I'm happy to be here, and I hope you are too. And I hope that you had a good week, and uh, you're everyone's doing well. I really do. And uh, and let's uh, let's just go ahead and jump into the lesson and and uh, and, and and enjoy uh, God's word and what it has to say to us. Uh, we are in. If you've been uh, following uh, the, where we are. Uh, we are in session four today of the uh, lesson of uh, how to share Christ. And uh, and this lesson is live the message. The point of the day's lesson is how we live reflects on the message we share. And uh, if you do not have accordingly, I'll go ahead and give you the scripture so you can be looking up in your uh, Bible that you have handy. I'm sure at the very least, I'm sure that you may, if, if you might have it on your phone. If you don't have it on your phone, put it on your phone. Okay. Um, I'm not one of those. I firmly believe in having it on your phone, okay? Uh, have it ready wherever you are, and I don't know anybody that doesn't have their phone wherever they are. <laughs> today's passage is, we are in the book of Colossians. Uh, today's passage is uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, and verses 12 through 17. Colossians 3, 1 through 3, and 12 through 17. And what the lesson about today is there again, it says live the message. We look at... What, what we're looking at is the um, the way that the, the lesson is going is we're going to be talking about well Colossians what Paul had to say to, to the people there uh, at uh, Colossae. All right, now when we look at Colossae itself, Colossae was a major city, a, ma a major uh, city on a, a big trade route uh, in Asia Minor, which would be modern day Turkey now. Uh, the, the church at Colossae is, is no longer, there's ruins there. They know exactly where it was, and they found all the ruins for it. But when we look at uh, the church itself, this is not a church that Paul founded. Uh, we're not really 100% sure who f actually founded the church itself in Colossae, but um, there's a good possibility, it, and if you, if you look at uh, an earlier end, uh, in, I think it's chapter 2, we're starting in chapter 3, Paul makes reference to, an, or a, kind of a shout out to, if you would, today. Can you imagine them back then, uh, Paul be standing up there and talking to the people and say, I'm going to give a shout out to Brian. <laughs> Brother Brian, how are you? <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know, they may have. But anyway, uh, there was this guy named Ephorus. Ephorus, okay? And Ephorus is mentioned uh, by Paul in, uh, I think there again, I think it was chapter 2, and it's talking about him. And what happened was, you know, uh, Paul did find, uh, uh, he, he was the founder of the church in uh, Ephesus. Now, I'm trying, I'm going to get tongue tied here if I'm not careful here. All right. Now, while he was in Ephesus, Ephorus came to Ephesus and took the message back from Ephesus to Colossae. <laughs> okay. And so you see, his name is almost spelled the same way as Ephesus. Ephesus. And uh, so anyway, so, uh, most scholars really think that he was the one that really got the church going because obviously he was impressed with what Paul had to say. And so he goes back to Paul and says, look, we got a problem here. And what's the problem? Well, here's the problem. You know, people, people, first impressions. Now, everyone, I'm, I'm going to say this, and every one of you are going to have a thought go through your head because everyone has been asked this in your life. How good, how much are first impressions worth? And that's a question that we could go on forever, and I'm not going to give you the answer to it because I really don't know the answer because right when you think it's, well, first impressions means everything, or you're one of the ones that say first impressions can turn out to be wrong most of the time, it, there's no correct answer to this. You really don't know. But quite often, quite often, we do find that the first impression, I have found this to be the case in my life at least, that the first impression that I've had of most people that I get to know over the years, the impression will change. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean bad. It can, be, it can change for the good just as uh, well as it can change for the bad, can it? And you, and you know that. But what we do find a lot of times the first impressions as far as Christians are concerned is the fact that it's easy for a person to put on a particular look. And as you get to know them better, you find that, they're not quite as good and holy as they seem to be at first. Some of that holier than thou type thing. And so that's, that's what is happening um, at the church at uh, Colossae. 
uh, the people there were being influenced by individuals or an individual that was pulling them away from the true gospel that they were being taught and that they were being showed more er earthly things and worldly things that and, and, and they were wanting to well they were backsliding is what it amounted to and they were trying they were, they were becoming legalistic in a lot of ways and uh, and so you can see where a lot of the things were pulling on them so Paul in uh, verses uh, one and two was uh, talking to them. Uh, about all the things they should not be doing and the things they should be doing. Now, starting in, uh, in chapter 3, verses 1 through 3, he says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth in the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now, when we look at the very beginning of this, it, it, it's real straightforward, and the whole lesson is real straightforward here. Uh, it's if ye if ye be then, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Now, what we're talking about is a newborn person, a, 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 the person that has been born again as a Christian here and being with Christ. You can only be with Christ if you accept him, correct? That's the only way it can be done. And when we're saying risen with Christ, you also can see the risen part right there. We know that he rose from the dead. We're rising from, from being the old man or woman into the new person. We're also being risen, and Paul has already alluded to in other places here, from our baptism in Christ, that we, we come out of the waters cleansed symbolically as a new person also. But we seek those things which are above. Where is above? Well, it's, he tells us right here, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Now, we believe in the right hand, don't we? Everything is like, you know, you think about the right hand of God is like it is the, 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 the most preeminent spot of honor in the universe is what it is. Plain and simple, hands down. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And what is the, what is the power of the person that is sitting at the right hand of the Father? Well, it's the power of everything. The world was made for him, in him, by him, through him, and everything about our world is Christ from the very beginning. And it will be forever and ever and ever. This earth will pass away and be gone, and Christ will still be forever and ever. So what are we to do? Well, he tells us, it says in verse 2, set your affection on, on things above, not on things of the earth. Now, I could beat this to death, and, there's, and it would be pointless to do that. There's not a person, I feel like, that's listening to this. That is, and watching this, that, that, that doesn't understand about the things above and the things here on earth. But you know something? I don't believe in assuming anything. We never assume like that. I would love the thoughts of knowing that some person somewhere along the way might accidentally stumble across a Sunday school lesson on YouTube one day and uh, maybe they're in a bad way and they hear something that, lot, that lifts them up and, and makes them understand the word of God and how much Jesus loves them. That's what it's all about, Jesus loving them. So when we say your affectional things above and on this earth, if you're on this earth and things aren't going good for you and, and, and you're, 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 you're downtrodden, uh, life is bad. You're that person that might be sitting in the floor pay, playing with a handgun. Uh, that person that's got a bottle of pills that they're, they're trying to decide whether to flush it down uh, the toilet or flush it down their throat and follow it up with a bottle of vodka. You don't, I don't know who that person might be or those things might be, but it can be good or it can be bad. It can be that person that's just the, totally the opposite, that thinks they have everything. They have money. They have fame. Uh, they have everything that a person could possibly want on the face of this earth, on the earthly thing. Things, but yet they may be actually holding that bottle of vodka and the bottle of pills at the same time too, haven't they? It doesn't, it could be anyone that is not focusing on the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost above, but are focusing on things of this earth only. So set your affection. Look at that word. Uh, I am going to talk some during this here about, you know, other versions that we have today. But, you know, some of Paul's words are archaic. Uh, words that are not used again today. But when you look at the word your affection, how do we use affection? You know, that's, that we use affection for love, don't we? When we? We don't use affection really that much for anything else. That when we, when we think affection, we, talk, we think of our spouses. 
we think of our children. We think of our grandchildren if you got them. Um, that, that those are the first things that we think of because they are the things that we are most affectionate about here on this earth. So why should not Jesus himself be the focal point of our affection? He should be the main point of our affection. So not on the things of this earth. These things on this earth will pass away. His love will endure forever. That we do know. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. We died, the old person, and our life is in Jesus Christ. Now, when we say our life, we died, the old person, uh, we use that term a lot, and it's like, well, I didn't die. Well, we did. We died. The sin part of us died. The sinner part of us died. And we came out the new person. Now, when we say, well, sin died, why did we pray to be forgiven of our sins? Because we're not perfected. Okay, We are forgiven for our sins. The Father, Jesus they, they forgive and they forget our sins as Christians, people that say that we love him and we do. And when I say say that we love him, not just you can't just say that you love Jesus while having that a commitment and being reborn. If you don't have that commitment and reborn, I don't know, you might be doing yourself more damage than good by saying that you do love Jesus and you're not making that commitment to him. Now, when we look at, when we look at verse, then we move on to verse 12, it says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Now, when we look at all the things here, it says, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Okay? Now, as the elect of God, we can bog ourselves down on that word elect, and we're not going to do it because that's not what the focus of today's lesson is. But let's look at the elect of God. As, and, and put it in a very simple put way and for appropriate at the time. The elect of God at that particular time had been only the who? The Israelites. And so these people have been accepted through the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Paul himself, an apostle of Christ, had been converted to Christianity. And so there's where the elect has become, not only was it the Israelites, the elect now are the Israelites and the Gentiles. And those elect are those people which accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. People want to get really bogged down in this elect thing. I know Romans 8, 29, I think it probably is. is uh, and this is where Calvinism comes in also. I'm not going there, okay? I'm trying not to at least, all right? The, we all, we all can go to heaven. We all, hear me people, we all can go to heaven. If you think that there are certain people that, that can't go to heaven, that is wrong. But you have got to accept Jesus Christ to do it. That what, that's what makes you elect. You know, it's kind of like an election. You know, when I don't want, you know, not like politicians, that's put, put politicians and Jesus in the same sense is kind of bad. I know I may get struck by lightning for this, but, but, you know, we elect politicians, don't we? And, 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 and it's supposed to be uh, the will of the people that the majority of the people want that pe that person, that individual to represent them. Okay. Well, it is, it is the will of God. It is the will of God that we be elected to Jesus Christ because he is our representative. He is the one that he is. He is. You, you look at Jesus, you look at the Holy Spirit. What does, what does the Holy Spirit do? Think about it. The Holy Spirit is there as a comforter for us. He's there to intercede for us. Okay, so there's where the elect is. That's the election that we have. But holy and beloved. Now, look right here. Uh, I was told you I'd get back to uh, the uh, other versions of the Bible. Um uh, it says, beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, uh, meekness, and long suffering. Now, 
this is a good place where when you look at like uh, bowels of mercy, okay? Uh, wow, that that that's a good one. We say that a lot, don't we? Uh, yeah, uh, 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 no, <laughs> my mind just went somewhere, and I'm not even gonna go there. Uh, when we look at this, this there it comes back to the way, way people taught and the way people wrote back then. Now, I I have several verses of the Bible that I like to read through when I'm reading this, and uh, the one I have on my phone right here is the Christian Standard Bible, and you know, just look at the words there, and some of these become apparent to you and obvious to begin with. But I'm just putting a plug in there for reading other things to make it simple, like uh, the Common English Bible and the, C, the, the CEB and the CSB. I love the two of them to death, okay, as supplemental to my King James. Here, here's what the words, where they say, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long-suffering in the King James. The, the CSB says, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. What's wrong with that? It makes it, it keeps you from having to dig up uh, what are bowels of mercies, right? I mean, that's what you would have to do. And really to understand that right there, someone else has done the work for you and has went back into the old English and dug out what it was. That's all it is. I'm just putting a plug in there for you to just kind of broaden your mind a little bit and make life easy on you. Okay, but when we look at these things right here, like last one, like long-suffering. Now that one, you can kind of pick that out in your mind, can't you? Because patience, long-suffering. I have been suffering long, <laughs> a very long time to try to get to this individual, and I did. Or I haven't, whatever, but I have not given up. I have the patience to do it because that individual's soul is worth saving. And it is worth my time and energy to work on that individual. And if that person dies, and has not accepted Christ, what did I do wrong? Absolutely nothing. It's on them. You cannot save someone. You can only lead them to salvation. It's their choice whether or not to accept it. But you've got to do your part to lead them. Forbearing one another. Okay, not not being easily offended here. Okay, now, now that's a hard one, isn't it? Boy, particularly look at this messed up world, this country that we've got right now. Everybody's mad at everybody about everything. Everybody, everything you say, it would be almost impossible. I didn't think I was going to go political here, and I've already done it right here. I, I had nothing in here that I saw that, and here it is. Not easily offended in this council uh, council culture that we have today, everybody's offended about something. Have you ever in your life seen people, they get, a, you got, you, you'll say the wrong word and you'll lose your job. You'll put the wrong Facebook post and you'll lose your job. Uh, you, you, you'll be kicked out of college. You'll be kicked out of high school. If you say, uh, come on, people. We do not get caught up in what's going on in this world right now. This is what we, t we talked about to begin with, did we? Not getting caught up in what's going on on the earth. But you, do you want to be caught up in all this mess? I hope not. Be caught up in Jesus, not in this. Not in this mess, that this sad this sad state that we're in right this moment in this country. Uh, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. And, uh, and we, we have absolutely no reason as Christians to get ourselves bogged down in this. Do we need to do our part? To fight this, the, the wrong, yes, we are always to stand up for the right and the right things. And, and I will always stand up for what is right and what is good and what is holy. But we can't get let be drugged down and get caught up in this, in this culture that is being developed today just so certain people can take over this country and rule it. Not run it, but rule it. If and forgiven one another, please forgive one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Think about that. Don't be holding no, no nothing against people. Do not have ill will against individuals because Christ died on that cross for you and for me, and you're gonna hold a grudge against someone else for something that happened 20 years ago. Nah, get over it, grow up. Grow up. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Charity. And we know how that word is used in the Bible, don't we? 
Charity is love. It's that agape love is what charity is. So above all, if you love your fellow individual, your fellow man, your fellow woman, child, it doesn't matter. If you love them, all this good stuff will fall in line. Because if you love someone, you treat them right. If you love someone, first of all, that agape love, that's the Jesus love. You want them to go to heaven and be there with you, don't you? And if, you, if you're if you going to heaven, you think maybe there's not enough room for someone else, and you might keep it all to yourself. Some Christians sure act that way. It's like, it's mine, and you're not going to get it. Christ died for all. Christ died for all, and all you got to do is accept him. And it's our responsibility to show people that. So take advantage of those responsibilities and those, those occasions that you can do that. And let the peace of God rule in your heart and to the which also ye called in one body and be ye thankful. We got to that, that peace of God rule in our heart. We know that's, you know, we've got to have that peace because if you don't have that peace, you'll be one of these people that's running around tearing the country up and acting the way they do. You, you, if, if, if you got Jesus in your heart, you're not going to act that way. In verse 16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do also in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and to the Father by him. Now, look at these two verses. These are the last two verses. And uh, it says, let the word of God dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Wisdom, okay? Wisdom seems to be kind of gone, doesn't it? Things that you've always assumed were just normal, straightforward things, and now you look and you go, how do people twist something around so badly? And they'll twist the word of God around just as much as they will anything else. And that's one thing we have to be very careful about. That's what was happening at the church at Colossae. Okay? They were twisting the word of God around. They were all the things that they were supposed to be doing, they were twisting it around, becoming more legalistic and not doing the things they were supposed to do. So wisdom, wisdom is something that comes through time and, and learning. Knowledge, wisdom. Wisdom, some people never have any wisdom at all. Some, some people might have all the book smarts in the world and still not have a bit, a bit of wisdom to go along with it. Uh, what was it? One the other day for uh, a guy had millions and millions and millions of dollars uh, in Bitcoin and, for, and forgot his access code. <laughs> and they won't give you the code back. There's no one to ask for the code to get it. No, you don't have any. You can't answer. You can't answer uh, what your first dog's name was, your first car was, and get, and get your code back. So somebody was smart enough to have that kind of money to be invest in something like that, but not, not smart enough to cover their own code. So well, that's smart to make the money, but it sure wasn't smart to not be able to figure out how to hold on to it. Teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms. Teaching and admonishing. How do you, how do you, you got teaching and admonishing put together right there in the exact same sentence. We, we can, we, we want, we want to teach, 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 teach. And, and it's, and we, we know how important teaching is. Everybody can be a teacher to someone. Everybody, there's no one that can't, I mean, everyone in the sound of my voice has taught somebody something in their life. I don't know what it might be, but if you've got a skill that you're good at, and you've got an apprentice that you've uh, that you've brought on to the uh, the skill, and 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 teaching them how to do that skill, and you see them develop and get better at that skill, right? You're a teacher because you taught them how to do whatever it was. And you know, and sometimes they'll turn out and do a better job at it than you will, and then which is a wonderful thing. And there, there again, don't be selfish. I've seen that happen many a time, and. Um, I've, I've, I have taught a lot of skill-based training in my life. And the majority of my life was teaching with skill-based training. And it, there was nothing that thrilled me more to see a person reach that level of competency in that skill. Because we know we, everything out there doesn't have to be uh, you know, a four-year degree or six years or eight years or whatever like that. There's a, you know, there, people still got to work with their hands in this world. 
And there's a lot of skills out there that a lot of people, the smartest people in the world, couldn't do if their life depended on it because God made us all individual. And we are to do the best we can with what we have. And if we reach our potential for what we have, oh my grace, I sound like Joel Osteen. Um, uh, we do need to reach our potential there, and we can do that. We can reach our potential and do the things that we should be able to do. And Christ gives us our potential. We all have spiritual gifts, don't we? All right. So we also have our, our gifts for this world and to make us and to make us comfortable and to be able to communicate with others and do things. But what he was talking about right here says, it says by in uh, psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Is that cool or what? Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. But now I, I, I can't give you a real good one on this side. The, the, we know what psalms are, right? Because we have a whole book of them. All right, so we know exactly what they were, and these people had them. Okay, so oh, oh, oh. Speaking of uh, of teaching, see, there's a thing. That's another thing about it. Once again, these people didn't have the stuff to fall back on that we have today. None of these people in the Bible had what we have today. They don't have a big bookcase like the one I'm looking at right now that's full of Bible stuff. Okay, but they did have the Old Testament, and they did have. The people like Paul that was writing letters to teach and Timothy and, all, and, and and just the list goes on and on and on. The people that were standing before them that had listened to the apostles and are taking the words of Jesus and the words being carried, 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 carried. Just like we have people carrying the word today, don't we? We have missionaries carrying the word today. Well, we, so we, we have people that go and hold revivals to carry the word today. So the word's still being carried. But there, So we got the Psalms, hymns and spiritual songs. Hymns and spiritual songs, okay? Let's let me say, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say everything I think right here because sometimes it's best to keep your mouth shut, but I love, I dearly love the Baptist hymnal, okay? I love everything about it. I love every song in it from stem to stern. I love everything from the front cover to the back cover. You know why I love it so much? Uh, I'm not big into new music, okay? Uh, new Christian music, that's wonderful if you like it. I mean, some of it I do like. I might like, kind of like Skillet. I get along with them pretty good, but uh, I'm just uh, I'm just not into it, and that's just me, okay? Not bashing anything right here, but I cannot pick up the lyrics, I can't take the lyrics off of any of the new songs, I can't at least, and see a sermon in it like I can see a sermon in any page I turn to in the Baptist hymnal. That's all I'm saying. You know, you're you're singing a sermon when you sing the old rugged cross. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I'm sorry, but I, I just love it. And that's what I think Paul is saying right here. You're singing a sermon. And, it is, and what does it say? Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Sing out loud. Make it happy. Make it happy. Sing. Be happy. I don't care what you're singing as far as Christian songs are concerned. I want you to be happy. And that's the idea behind it. Young people getting up there. We've, and we've got, and uh, you know, you've got a, a, a band like Skillet, for example. I, I, I love a guitar. Okay. So no, I'm not an old fogey that doesn't want the guitars in church. I love all instruments. All instruments are for the edification of God. And I'm here to tell you, I love a guitar and the Bible is full of stringed instruments. Yeah. Uh, you ever heard a thing called the harp? Okay. Do you like drums? If you don't like drums, you wouldn't like Miriam and her tambourine then, would you? So anyway, I'm just saying it's all good if it's praising God. And it's all to make you feel good and, and to make you want Jesus is what it is. And it says, whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all. Okay all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Now, what am I going to add to that right there? There's nothing. I'll read it again. And whatsoever ye do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and to the Father by Him. Let it soak in. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for that verse 17. It tells us everything that we need to know right there. Right now, I'm going to do exactly what it instructs me to do. 
I am going to glorify you. I'm going to thank you for everything that you do for me, what you do for Soldier Bay, for our pastors, uh, our deacons, uh, our workers, uh, just our, everyone in our church. As we come together, Father, I just thank you for praising for and praising you for everything that you do for us. And Father, I pray that you'll continue to keep us safe, keep us holy, and keep us loving your Son, Jesus. And it is in, it is in his name, Jesus, your Son, that I offer you this prayer. Amen.